Hi everyone! Um, welcome to VizLib Happy Hour. This is the show where we help you make your data talk. And I'm joined here today with Stephanie French. Hi, Steph. Hi. I've got an important question to ask you today. What's that? So, what's your favorite food? It's corn. <laughs> it, it's what? It's corn. Really interesting. You say. <laughs> This song also. This song also speaks to my favorite food too. Okay, I will. The song is like such an earworm. Like I'll like randomly like think of lines of the song throughout the day if I hear it. <laughs> to anyone who's watching who doesn't know what's happening, uh, there's a new song that has become super popular. Um, you know when they do interviews with people and they say something really funny, people will songify it? This has been made into a meme. It's called It's Corn. Or It's Con. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't, I can't play too much of it because I'm scared we'll get copyrighted, take it down, you know, all that jazz. But it's a good song. I recommend you guys check it out. And today we're having a corn, con themed happy hour. Would you say we're having a corntastic day? Yeah, <laughs> having a corntastic day. And coming at you, even if you don't, you know, even if you're not a data viz enthusiast, we'll be spitting out some corn facts throughout the show to get prepared for those. Should we start with one now? Sure. Okay. This one was very interesting to me. Did you know corn cobs always have an even number row of corns of really? corn kernels i didn't know that yeah it's fun right is that true i don't know i don't know how someone <laughs> could go in and check each each piece of corn that's ever been grown but maybe there's a way okay uh well let's get started i want to show you guys something basic that we have now and we'll, you know, think of ways to make it look nicer. We can, if anyone has questions, we can teach you how we did X, Y, Z. I've got Steph here. She's very, very good at beautifying apps. Like the things that she makes are, it's mind blowing sometimes and she's super creative. So I'm, I'm excited to see what, what you think we could do to this. So right now I've got this, you know, it's okay. <laughs> uh, so we've got we've got something on on the CO two emissions here. We've got the price of corn and and it's calculated. Inflation is calculated into it here. We've got some cool facts about corn here and just some nice nice corn <laughs> down at the bottom. Uh, we'll show you the the data more in detail. So let's go here. I know, I know uh, really, really advanced click users, they don't like using the data manager, but I like it. <laughs> um, so we've got corn prices here, we've got the year, month, we do have wheat, rice, and corn, um, but I thought we would just focus on corn. We've also got this one, which is you've got all the food products and then you have the total emissions, CO2 emissions, and some other things like, like, uh, oh my gosh, I don't even want to pronounce this, eutrophying? What is it? Eutrophying? Uh, I don't know what that is. Okay. Do you know what that is? <laughs> no. Um... Eutrophying emissions. We've got freshwater withdrawal that that we know, and uh, you know land use, etc. So we've got some greenhouse gas data. Uh, we've got a nice sheet. It uh, it's all the types of corn, a picture of it, and characteristics and their uses, their popular uses. And I just made a table because I also spelled frame. From, from a, it's quick typing, but uh, it's uh, it's a video with an iframe, and it's just to 
it's just a way to be able to put a video into your app and I'll show you guys how to do that later on. So yeah, okay, here's our sheet. Thoughts? Um, well, just looking at the bar chart, I can't tell what the colors mean, so. Okay, we need to throw in a legend or something like that. Do you think it's better to have a legend or should we write out write out um, what each color is and then just change the font color into the color of the bar? I always check to see like how much room the legend takes up because sometimes it can take up a bit of space. So I'd prefer to like write it out in that case. Okay. So I've got, all of these are master items, so I've got all the things I've been playing with on another sheet. Uh, here's the video, sneak peek. <laughs> it's corn. Okay. Hmm. So it's here. We can also check it at the bottom. Oops. Do you prefer an, a legend or do you think going with some text would look better? Um, I think the legend to the right was pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, I think legend to the right is good. And then we can, there's space here that we can play around with. Mm -hmm. Cool. I don't like that it says some and then animal feed. So we can actually just, I'm thinking we just change this. The label so it looks nicer. Clean it up a bit. While I do this, Steph, do you have any corn facts <laughs> for us? Let me pull some up. Um, the average ear of corn has 800 kernels in 16 rows. And this is interesting since it's the next one and I didn't know this. Only 1% of corn planted in the United States is sweet corn. Mm. And I don't want to, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but sweet corn is the type of corn that people usually eat raw mm -hmm. or like on a cob. Fun fact. 16 row, 16 is also my favorite number. That's probably why I like corn so much. <laughs> is that your favorite? Vegetable? Is that considered a vegetable? I guess it's more of like a... I don't know. I think it definitely is my favorite vegetable. Um, I put it on everything. And I mean everything. Corn? Yeah. I put How do you corn. put corn on everything? <laughs> There's a way. Uh, don't Please don't judge me. I know people are going to judge me. Corn on pizza is actually really good. Wow, you really do like corn. I do. I love corn so much. I like Like does that do you have to put it on yourself or do people offer that as a topping? Some people do offer that as a topping, but if they don't, sometimes I'll get um you know when you get a frozen pizza? I I don't I've never made a pizza from scratch yet. But I'll I'll just get corned canned corn and then sprinkle it on and then bake it. That is interesting. It's good. I promise. What else do you put corn on? Um, <laughs> I will put it in any any kind of soup. So any soup is made better with corn, in my opinion. I'll put it like any rice dish, corn. Sometimes pasta dishes, I'll, I'll add corn into it. That's interesting. Is that, I, I know people, oh, with that being said, we forgot to talk about our drinks. I don't think we have corn related drinks, no. but. But what are you drinking today? I just have coffee, but it's in a cool dinosaur mug, which actually, if it's hot, it's just the skeletons of the dinosaur. But as you can see, it's not very hot anymore. Oh, wow. Okay, I've got a cool thing. There's a bad word on here, so I'll send it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a lavender milk tea. It comes in a Ooh, powder that form. Good. 
But there is high fructose corn syrup in it. Yeah. So I'm fulfilling my daily corn needs. <laughs> um, okay, checking in this master item. We're having too much fun. Is that possible? <laughs> Does anyone put corn on anything? Anything strange? Hmm. No. Okay. I see there's no other extreme corn lovers out there. <laughs> okay. I actually unlinked this visualization. So I'm going to do emissions. Steph, what are your thoughts on corn? Uh, it's not my favorite. I don't eat it very much. I do like like Mexican street corn. It's really good. But other than that, I mean, I like corn and stuff. Just like straight corn, though, I don't really eat that often. Cob. And like corn on the cob, it gets all stuck in your teeth. And oh, no. It's messy. Oh, no. Do you eat corn on the cob a lot? Yeah, I, do. I love corn on the cob. I just steam it and then I eat it. I don't even need butter. Yeah. Crazy as that sounds. I don't like sticky corn, though. I don't know if you've ever had sticky corn. Mm -mm. It's uh, it's just corn, but it, it's like very st sticky and it has like a weird starchy, starchy taste to it that I don't love. Oh, we've got Yohem. Uh, oh, popcorn to... I do love. I do love corn in that form. Popped. <laughs> yes. Well, fun fact, popcorn is made with flint corn. Hmm. Something that I've learned. We'll go in more into corn facts later, but that's a little fun tidbit. Okay, so we've got we've got a cool legend in there. I think it I think it adds something to the chart. Again, mm -hmm. the colors I don't love. If you want to go and change it feel free. Um, I did throw in this line chart. It's the prices of corn throughout the years. 2013 was a bad time to get corn. We did have a, a really good time a few years ago, but I think it's starting to go up again, which is sad. So eat all the corn you can now, guys. Um, <laughs> uh, but this is just corn, and I do have this axis here. I don't know if we want to keep that, but I... I tried to, I tried to line it up with this corn, so maize, here. I don't know if that makes sense. Why would, why did you do it like that? Um, I just thought it would be a fun way to show, you know, here's corn and here's the prices throughout the years. Yeah. You know, I... Let me take off the axis and and see if that makes it look nicer. So I've got these linked visualizations going to the appearance. And if I just hide that axis. We would what, need to find... that access, what was that representing? It was representing the the price. Was it like per... Um, like, can you do a call out so we have a reference point? Is that possible? Yes, yeah, we can. So we can do markers on this line chart. Uh, so here is 345.8. I need to see what... Yeah, that's what I was wondering. That's... What is it averaging? I will let you guys know in a second. So I found this data on Kaggle, and it's, it's serial prices within the last 30 years. And it's corn price per ton. Mm, okay. I'm guessing it's USD. Ooh, there's coffee, rice, and beef. 
price changes. We can do that. We can do a whole meal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can add some reference lines in here to kind of give more context. Uh, so the highest is 345.8. We'll do, we'll actually do an annotation in here, which I think is really cool. So what year is that? That's 2012 and 245.8. Okay, I'm liking this. And the title we'll call it uh, Price Highest Highest It's Ever Been. Bit. Been. And the description is 345.8 per ton. And, you know, we can change everything in it. I don't know if we want to spend too much time on this, but... Do a little something. Okay, I'm thinking going on that side. Mm -hmm. Still a little bit high. Do you like it on the left or the right? I think I actually liked it on the right a little bit more. Something like this. I might change the, the axis, the max of it. I'll do 400. Yeah, okay. Nope, okay, it still doesn't show. Play around with it a little bit more. See what I can change. What if I change the axis to be on the left? I think that might work better. Just need to find it. Don't wanna, I don't want to make you guys watch me do this for too long. Oh, I just wish this would work. Okay. I'll bring it down a little bit so we can, I can go into this little crevice here and then I think it would look good. Shall I read another corn fact while you're doing that? Yes, please. Corn was first domesticated in southern Mexico more than 10,000 years ago. It's a long time. What? So that means corn is native to Ameri the Americas. Okay, so I guess corn on pizza is extra bad then. <laughs> <laughs> I actually heard that tomatoes were not, were uh, originally from Italy, so... They didn't actually have it. They didn't actually have tomato sauce on pizzas hmm. until the Americas and Europe started trading. 
That's interesting. Okay, we could fiddle around this all day, but I think this is okay for now. With time, I would have changed it a bit, but I think you guys might get the idea the higher, the highest it's ever been. But I don't like that axis. I'm just going to get rid of this. And uh, it does look kind of empty, especially here on the tiles. Is there anything that you would add to it to give it more of a pop? The tiles? Yeah, here. These bits. Um... And the cool thing is you should be able to f uh, flip on click. For some reason, the image doesn't always show. It will pop up and then disappear. Do you have any data specific to that? those types of corn or no? Um, no, it's all, it was collected by hand. So I just have the fun facts and uh, some, <laughs> some details on on the description and and when it's used yeah <laughs> i like that you put and fun songs on sweet <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah popcorn is flint corn apparently apparently you can't make popcorn with any types of corn i've learned a lot about corn we have like a popcorn maker and there are i guess it's probably all flint corn but there are different like types of kernels or types of corn you can get and it's like the kernels won't get stuck in your teeth because they're small or they dissolve and things like that so there are like several different types of corn that you can pop but i guess it's all in that category probably mm, maybe there was one we can check in a second it's uh it says that the outer layer is super thin it has the thinnest outer layer so maybe that's the type that is popped um so it doesn't get stuck in your teeth Ooh, that annotation okay it feels a bit empty um what about <clears throat> if you made the by year thing a bar chart instead? I mean, it would be less empty, but it might be too cluttered if you do that. If I made this into a bar chart, yeah, uh, I can give that a try. We do have someone coming in with a fun corn fact. Eduardo saying, the U.S. counts corn as a vegetable. Everywhere else, it's classed as a grain. That's what I was wondering. I was like, because when I asked if it was your favorite vegetable, I was like, I don't even know if that's the right way to classify it. But I've been told it's a carb, and I'm like, no, there's no way. <laughs> it's it's got to be a vegetable. I eat it as if it was a vegetable. <laughs> I don't know what the nutrients are in corn. I know... I know the sweet corn has a lot of sugar in it and starch. Not as much starch as other corns, but it's very high in starch, which is not the best. You should, like, collaborate with the corn kid because, I mean, you might love corn as much as he does. Maybe it more. sounds like. <laughs> Okay, we've got something like this. I'll sort it by year. And that color is crazy. We'll just, we'll keep this for now. And I'll chuck that in here. So here I'm using the KPI designer, which people should know by now, it's, it's one of my favorite KPI. It's one of my favorite charts, uh, but also you can use, you can actually just use a bar chart in here, which I should have done. I'll quickly do that. So the dimension is year. And 
this one should be should be inflation prices. What do you think about like with the chart, the other bar chart doing like a top 10 or something instead of doing everything, even the ones that have like very little Oh yeah, um, good call. Let me try that. So with this bar chart, if I wanted to, I could limit and top 10. Yeah, I think that's good. Corn's quite low. I could do the bottom. 10. <laughs> oh, corn is low? Yeah. So fun fact about corn, it's quite eco-friendly because you can grow a lot of it in a, in a small space. And yeah, it doesn't take so much. But I think this is mainly in the U.S. So another fun fact coming at you guys. Uh, one third of the world's corn is grown in the U.S. <laughs> so I think that's why the emissions are so low for us because it's, it's easier to transport because it's all grown here but don't we export a lot yes i do i do believe so i think this the data that this is coming from is gathered it's on a it's a u.s centric data set so i think they're only accounting for the transport within the u.s or from the u.s elsewhere or to the u.s so yeah corn is it's very low in transport it it doesn't use that much it doesn't use that much land or farming which is great there's no animals to feed and i think the thing with the most the most is is farm so so like soy milk i think takes the less the least amount of farm space but yeah it's still great and you know there's no packaging required because it comes in its own packaging <laughs> that's true so this is only em emissions for like growing the crops? Is yeah. It? Okay. Growing, transporting. So from growing to getting it on your dinner plate. Okay. All of the emissions there. Um, for the top, we can look at beef is, is by far the most uh, energy non-efficient. Uh, you need to use a lot of farms, a lot of land use. Cheese makes sense because it's it's from cows usually. All the top ten are animal or animal product. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can look at the top twenty as well and see. So, so after rice, this is when it gets, you know, slimmer. But yeah, I think I think if people stopped eating meat or at least red meats i think it would decrease their their carbon footprint by a lot or just mm -hmm. cutting out beef in general i think that would be really really helpful if anyone needed an extra push to, to you know uh limit their red meat intake here it is what do you think about doing a top 10 and then another bottom 10 or top five and how bottom. many are there all together? Ooh, there's a lot. If you're gonna do that, I would do top five and bottom five probably. Okay. Top five and then We'll do exactly this, and then we'll look at the bottom five. Oops. Um, bottom And corn just snuck in there. Yes, love corn. <laughs> uh, how do you feel about, 
Have the you top watched? five, I thought the top was beef when we just looked at it. Wasn't it? Yeah. Do I have any filters in? No. What is happening? Oh, I think it's what it's doing is it's it's calculating on animal feed. Okay. Ah, gotcha. Okay, so it's it's calculating on a specific on a specific measure. Um, let me see if I can calculate on something else. So right now I have it sorted by sum of total emissions. If we did have to pick one, which one would you I'll say the farm looks like. Yeah. Okay. And for this one we can do farm. Oh, but corn's not on here anymore. Okay, hey, that's all right. <laughs> Do you like the values shown or not shown? Um, I think for this, I would say not shown just because it makes it look a little bit busy. I'm going to chuck that right in here. You've got this top five. And we've got this bottom five. We definitely need to label all of these. Okay, so now it's getting a little bit hectic. And we don't need to, we don't need the legend for both of them. So I'll get rid of one. We've got one question saying, uh, why remove others? When you click on others, you get the next five. Uh, I just did it because I thought it would look prettier, but functionally, yes, uh, it would make sense to keep others. <laughs> But that's a great suggestion. I can, I'll pop that back in. It's, it's harder to see too, if we keep the others. I won't for this one, but I think for the, the top, because it's so much, maybe the others won't take up as much space. Steph, do you have another corn fact for us? I sure do. Um, 91 gallons of water is needed to produce one pound of corn. That's what? a lot of water. <laughs> what? 
Ooh, I do have water data in here. We can check it in and, and see. Yeah, that would be interesting. Else. This is now turned into a fat check. <laughs> Happy hour. Okay, so we've got this, we've got this. It's not looking great now. Can change that in a second. Let's let's fact check this. Oh. So for the video I just made a table. I you can copy and paste the iframe from YouTube uh, with the embed link link at the bottom of the the video, and uh, you can just paste that into a table into the 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 dimension and boom you can get your little eye player in there okay so water usage let's look at a bar chart for this refresh quickly How did you hear about the It's Corn song? Because I didn't even know about it until you showed me. <laughs> um, with my daughter, we look at YouTube to watch, or not YouTube, but TikTok to watch like cat videos and stuff. Oh. Um, and there was like a cat video <laughs> with that music to it. So we had to look up the origin of the song. When you said and your I... daughter, I typed in kids up here. <laughs> <laughs> Food. <laughs> But yeah, now it's like a whole TikTok thing where everybody's using it as song, the song to their video, and it's like ridiculous. I remember the, like, you got to jiggle jiggle. Oh, yeah. For sure. No, 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 no. It would be interesting to see if we have time, like how many views that YouTube video has compared to the other ones that that guy does because he has like a whole series where he interviews kids at recess. <laughs> oh my, yeah, we can make a whole dashboard on it. <laughs> okay, legend. Oh, scroll preview. Don't want this. Let's get rid of that. So Corn isn't that bad. So that makes you wonder how much water is needed for all of the other ones. Nuts needs a lot. I think corn is zero. Interesting. Hmm. That doesn't seem right. Maybe it's not the Best. We can try this one, the freshwater withdrawals. Do some. Hmm, corn doesn't seem to have a lot compared to others, which I guess is good. I guess if it's 90 liters of water or gallons per pound, did you say? Yeah, that seems like a lot, though. Yeah, but this is looking at, oh, it's, it's liters per kilogram. Oh, yeah, I guess it should be around 90. But, I mean, it's wild that these are using, like, Thousands. Yeah. So we should eat more corn and coffee, potatoes, wine, and, and avoid these. What's the first one? Cheese. Cheese. 
<sighs> I love cheese though. Okay, I guess you can have cheese, but then you have to get rid of everything in the middle up until corn. Okay. I think I could do that. Like olive oil. I don't like olives, so. That's like, you know, olives are a very polarizing food, I feel like. I love olives, but I know so many people hate them. Yeah, I don't like them at all. I don't understand how you could like them. I've tried, no. like, it's, multiple occasions. I like salt, and they're very salty, so that's one reason. Like there's, like, a weird aftertaste to them. Everyone hates Brussels sprouts, too, and I love Brussels sprouts. A lot of people hate asparagus. I love asparagus. Maybe that's why I don't like corn that much, because everybody else loves corn, and <laughs> I just don't. Do you like a, what's it called, tapa? What's the thing where you have a cracker and then you you have all Oh, like tapenade? Tapenades. Oh, yeah. That's good. I remember one time I had a tapenade when I was young, and I thought it was, like, meat or, like, veggie toppings, <laughs> and it was olives. I was like, this mm -hmm. is the worst thing ever. And then since then, I just haven't liked, I haven't liked olives. This restaurant uh, where I live, they have, uh, it's like olive oil with olives and roasted garlic and goat cheese. It's like a dip for bread and it's so good. It's delicious. Corn throughout. Through. I can't spell today. Do you like to capitalize everything in your titles or do you just capitalize the first letter? I think I usually capitalize all of it. Me too. I I feel I feel weird not capitalizing everything. Yeah. So we've got price of corn. Isn't that how you're supposed to do it? Is there like debate about that? Well, I've I've heard that now it's it's kind of becoming cool to not capitalize everything and write it as if it was a sentence. Mm -hmm. But I can't do that. I'm not on that level yet. I think what would have been really cool is if we could do the line chart under here so it looks like the corn is growing on top of a line chart. Mm -hmm. And and the the soil is the price of corn throughout the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I, I think that's doable. It would just take more time. If you had like all the time in the world, what else would you what would you change and add to this? Um, I think the water consumption is interesting. So I'd probably have that. What else is on the data? So there's water consumption. There's there's a price of also rice and wheat. Um, that's which is a different data set, and we've got scarcity weighted. I I don't actually know exactly what that means. We've got uh, eutrophying emissions. Don't know what that is. We have the freshwater withdrawals per. So we have it based on calorie, protein, and also uh, kilogram produced. We have greenhouse gas emissions. land use that one might be actually pretty interesting too how would you display it um is it just 
I can't really read it. Um, is it just like land use per crop? Yeah, land use per kilogram of crop produced. And it's meters squared. Um, I mean, a bar chart's always just good to show like the differences between, I love a good trusty bar chart. <laughs> Go into some bar charts then. So if I change this. So this is usually what I do. I have one page with like everything on it and then one that's cleaner that I'll yeah. add things to. I always make like a million charts before I decide what I'm actually going to do. Like I'll chart everything and then I'm like, this is interesting and this is not interesting. Do you go in with the aesthetic um, big picture first and kind of think about what you would build or do you build out all the charts and then find a way to to make everything? Um, I usually decide what charts I want to use or what insights I want to show. And then I'll like pick a color palette for that. And then I'll kind of do the layout, which I know a lot of people do the layout first and then kind of build off of that but i i don't do it that way do you do it do you do a layout first or do you do kind of the layout as you go i do i think i go in with an idea of of kind of what i want so when i when i started on this i was thinking okay i definitely want corn on the bottom and maybe like sun like make it look like a cornfield with a lot of things inside of this but um I, I do think that your way, you get more more facts out of it instead of just looking aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. But you did send me this really cool website and I thought they made this they oh, made yeah. a really beautiful dashboard. Yeah, I like that representation of like feed, exports, ethanol, like showing the you know, composition of how it's used. I think that's really cool. I think if I went in with my method and, and tried to try to design something out first, it, it would be almost impossible to come up with this. You would need to have everything on the back end. But I, I wonder how they did this. It looks like maybe Adobe. Or yeah, Photoshop. definitely a design tool. Which I always wonder when people use that kind of thing, like how do they measure proportionately like that kind of like the the crops where the crops are like how do you measure that proportionally to the percentage that it takes up yeah i i agree i mean if you look at feed like looking here it looks like feed is twice as big as ethanol and then exports is a little bit smaller than ethanol mm -hmm. but feed and ethanol are, are almost proportionate yeah i don't know if you guys can read this so feed is 37% and ethanol is 34%, while exports is 17%. So exports is about half. It's half of ethanol, but it does not look like half of ethanol. And sweetener is, it's five. But also, um, here you have starch. It's got one plant on it, but... And it's 1.6%, but sweetener has 5.3%, but sweetener only has three plants. If it was me, I would have made it all add up to yeah. like a, a hundred. Yeah, that would be a good idea. But um, I do like the components of corn. If I had the perfect data set, I would have loved to do a sand key and seen like, here's all the corn and then here's the different types that are grown in the US or in the world, like the percentage of the different types of corn grown. And then it goes into maybe the different uses. Mm -hmm. I've yet to find that data set, I think. I think it has to be collected by hand. <laughs> no one's made a, a corn data set yet. I did see there was like a USDA, is that, are you, some kind of agriculture 
U.S. agriculture site where they have data sets, but it was like very complex on how you'd pull the data. Like you had to like select certain things and all, all that kind of thing, but that might be a place you could find data. Yeah. Okay. That's good. And, but that's very U.S. centric, but I guess that yeah, that's okay yeah. because we do grow one third of the world's corn. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is really cool. It's from uh, visualcapitalist.com. They made this. Okay, uh, I want to talk about tiles before we go. Um, something cool with tiles is that you can actually flip tiles. So how you would do that is you would go into Viz Tips, and there's a place you can select the visibility type. You can either have a tool tip, flip on tile click, flip on hover, or flip on object click. I've picked flip on object click, and then what you can do is you would make whatever you want it to flip to a KPI designer um, and save it as a master item. So here I have just a picture of corn, which I'll actually pull up here. So right now there's nothing, but when you click on it, it should show. Where is it? Let me add in a filter here. Just really quickly, corn type. So, yep. It's weird because sometimes it does show. I don't know why it's not showing now. Of course, this happens live. <laughs> what if I don't? That's very strange. Uh, possibly I need to, oh, I think it's because I didn't add the viz tip in here. That makes so much more sense. So I gotta do only. Okay, it's showing down here, but not in here. Hmm. Okay, well, once that once I get that figured out, it should work. There are apps on the on our app gallery page where there are examples and you can definitely download those and see how that works, but it is under Viz Tips and you can click to flip, which I think is really great. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So this app, I can keep shushing it up and, and working on it. You know, last thoughts, any any last things to make this better before I go and start to work on this? Um, Maybe like with the colors for the bar chart, make it like represent a farm or something like the gr green for grass. Uh, you could use the yellow for corn, just like kind of make it with the theme of, I guess, crops or farms or something. Okay. And for these little tiles, I, I think it looks so simple. Maybe put some, like, icons of something that it 
like you have animal feed or cornmeal and popcorn, like maybe put a little popcorn kernel icon in there or something. Okay. So add some more icons, some more images, and then good to go. Cool. Doable. Okay. Awesome. Well, we can end it there. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you, Steph, for coming on. And uh, I want, I actually want to play you guys just a little bit of the clip before we head out. So here it is. Let me make a new sheet. <laughs> I can't hear it. Oh, you can't? No. <gasps> I'll play the music down here. So, it looks like this. <laughs> <laughs> How's that? <laughs> it's the cutest thing. Um, and in here, oh, I just subscribed. Um, yep, you have a quick iframe. You can change the height and the width. And yep, you can make it huge if you wanted to and play around with that. But yes, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, it's corn. It was a corn-tastic <laughs> Abby hour. Um, I hope you had fun, Steph. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Uh, well, cheers. Cheers. I gotta censor myself. <laughs> You'll have to tell me what that says later. <laughs> Will do. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye.